Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SO Derek and Ding series on the Mr. FPJ DE10 Nano Project, more specifically the Nintendo 64 core. Because even though active development ended in March of this year, suddenly this core has been heating up with a new test core as well as a bunch of patches fixing some games and getting us very close to 100% compatibility. And we have another game added to that list today that is now going to be 100% playable from start to finish on Mr. FPJ with a patch. So we're really getting very minimal as far as games that do and don't work are concerned. Now Polaris Snow Cross is not going to be anyone's number one game on the Nintendo 64, that is for sure, but it was one of the games that continually froze for people when they tried to play it on the core, whether the Turbo Core or the stock CPU speed core. So Rule Set came around and did a patch just like he did for Resident Evil 2, and now this game is going to be 100% playable on your Mr. FPJ, knocking another game off the does not work list. And like I said, at this point in time, we're almost up to 100% compatibility with the retail Nintendo 64 library. And if you missed last week's video as well, there's a bunch of ROM hacks that work on the core, and I will be doing another video on those shortly. But if you want to recommend any ROM hacks you haven't seen yet and see if they work on the core or not, just leave me a list down below. But it is absolutely awesome to get another working game on this Mr. Core. And it really just means that we're getting to that point where almost every single game works. Now, as far as Player Snowcross is concerned, this patch basically does a cycle delay, just like Resident Evil 2, and that's what was actually causing the freeze. Because if you're not aware, Mr. FPGA and the Jurassic DE10 Nano, along with the RAM on board, has a little bit of a latency issue that could cause some freezing in certain games. So doing that cycle delay is basically going to alleviate any of the freezing conditions. And trust me, in game Game performance you're never going to know this this is something that would be imperceivable to the human eye and mind it does mean that this game isn't going to be cycle accurate to real nintendo 64 hardware but the question really is if it's something that you would never even notice or couldn't even notice does it really matter in the end because if you just want to play player snow cross and you want to have the same experience on real hardware as you do on mr fpj then patching this really doesn't make any fundamental difference in the playability or overall performance of it it's just bypassing a certain condition that was causing some latency and freezing the game. And that was the weird thing about Polaris Snowcross. Sometimes you could get a whole race in, sometimes it would freeze in 40 seconds. It was very intermittent. And it's awesome that Rule Set has come through and done this patch like he did for Resident Evil 2 in Jet Force Gemini. And in about a minute, I'm going to go over the new core, how to grab it, how to get the patches, and how to patch them as well in case you've missed any of the previous videos. Because I know now there are three games on Mr. FPGA for Nintendo 64 that require patches to work, and not every Everyone's going to know that, so I'm going to explain a little bit more in depth. But honestly, even though Player Snowcross is not my favorite game in the world, getting it running on the court is another awesome bonus because even though this thing was hyper impressive when Robert or FPJ Zoom Spas finished development, the fact that a few games would not work drove pretty much the entire community insane because we were really rooting for that 100% compatibility. Now, as far as the patches are concerned for Player Snowcross as well as Jet Force Gemini and Resident Evil 2, you can grab them over on the Mr. FPJ forum. I will leave a link in the description below. There is an explanation from rule set as to what each and every patch does. And you'll see here when we get down to player Snowcross, it says it essentially does the same thing as Resident Evil 2, which is just a 16,000 cycle wait for the main CPU every time reality signal processor is resumed. It's just a delay in 16,000 cycles. And I know that sounds like a big number, but trust me, the amount of cycles that go through the processor, this really is a very small number, even if on paper it seems large. And when you download these you will see patches for Conker's Bad Fur Day and that is something that you don't really need to patch anymore on the current test core that may be merged into update all shortly but if you don't want to play around with test cores you can use this patch as well to get Conker's Bad Fur Day running and you will still need a patch for Jet Force Gemini even though there is a new core because it doesn't function within that. So you'll just use this web patch which I'll link below as well to patch up your game files use the North American versions unless the patch specifies and you'll be good to go. And as far as the sound on Polaris Snowcraft. Sounds great to my ears. Listen, and I'll be right back with more info.
mean, the reality is it's not a very exciting soundtrack and it's not a very exciting sound effects either, but it does work in the core and that's what we're here to really celebrate and to tell you guys about. We've gotten so many new working games, a new test core where you don't need patches for certain titles as well as the fact that Battle for Naboo now just 100% works and I've talked to other people who have tested it. It has been 100% perfectly fine, so hopefully soon some of these changes will be actually merged into the update all core because again, at the recording time of this video, you do need to grab that test core and you do need to manually install it on your own Mr. FPJ SD card or else you can just continue to patch Conquer but do be aware there is no patch for Battle for Naboo it is just the new core so if you pop over to Mr. FPJ and you look at the pin messages you'll find that Nintendo 64 cache fix test v1.rbf that is the core file and that's what you're going to download and put into the underscore consoles folder on the root directory of your SD card so you can get this new test core if you missed the previous video this means Star Wars Battle for Naboo is going to be 100% playable from start to finish. And this was another title that people really remember fondly from the Nintendo 64 days and they were a little bit disappointed that it didn't work. This isn't one that I remember playing back in the day. Maybe I rented it once and it didn't just stick with me. But for every game I've loved, there's a game like this out there that you love and you did want to play on Mr. FPJ. So this one again has been added to the list of games that are playable. On that test score, Conquer's Bad Fur Days also 100% good to go. Now do remember that you still need the patch for Resident Evil 2 because the solution to fixing the freezing here isn't the same thing as it is for Battle for Naboo or Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Really the four games that now work have two different independent reasons for not working on the core without patches or without that test core. So we're still in the territory that two games need to be patched but honestly that really isn't too bad whatsoever because you get Resident Evil Evil 2 and you also get Jet Force Gemini which is one of those classic late stage rare games for Nintendo 64 that really kind of feels like it should have been held over for something like the GameCube because this thing feels like it just pushes at every single seam of the Nintendo 64 and again when you download that zip file from the Mr. FPGA forums you will have the patch for Resident Evil 2 as well as Jet Force Gemini in there as well as Conqueror's Bad Fur Day if you don't want to use the test core and I just want that to be very clear if you don't use the test core, you have to patch everything, and Battle for Naboo will not work at all. If you use the test core, you just need to patch Resident Evil 2 and Polaris Snowcross. Additionally, Gauntlet Legends has gotten some improvements as well because there were some missing voices from the game when you were playing it on the core. So Rule Set went ahead and developed a patch, and then Robert came around and developed a new test core as well to try to get this game's voices 100% working. And the nice thing is we now have two options to make that happen. You can either patch the game and get the voices back, or you you can go and grab the most recent test score from Mr. FPJ Discord on the Nintendo 64 channel. So no matter how you want to do it, that's another vast improvement. Because while this game was 100% playable and I did play it from start to finish, losing those voices was a bit of a bummer and it seemed like there was just a small bug in the FPJ code that was preventing that from working. So between Rule Set and Robert, they went back in, took a look at what was going on, fixed it up, and now Gauntlet Legends is 100% good to go as well. And that is just awesome. Development on Nintendo 64 has really taken some strides in the last month or so. Conquer's Bad Fur Day, Jet Force Gemini, Resident Evil 2, Battle for Naboo, Polaris Snowcross, and now Gauntlet Legends. So run, don't walk over to the forum link below, or go to Mr. FPJ Discords and grab that new test core. It's 100% worth your time. This thing just keeps getting better and better. Short of that, we're done. Go play some Nintendo, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.